All right, welcome to part C. We just got done talking about the addition rule, which tells us how unions and intersections relate to each other. And we talked about how this rule, you need to, to think about these rules until they make sense. Uh, probability is not very fun if you just try to stick numbers in formulas without really having a good sense of what's going on. But we said to get the probability that somebody is either A or B, one thing or another, take all the people that are A, add to it all the people that are B, but then you have to subtract off the people that are both. Otherwise, you're going to double count them. And for people that are visual learners, let's look at another Venn diagram here. We're supposed the probability of A is 0.3. So everybody in A is in the pink circle. Everybody that's B, the probability of B is 0.4 in the yellow circle. If you want to get all the people that are either A or B, you can't just add the 0.3 to the 0.4. What we want for the union is everybody that's either in the yellow circle or in the pink circle or in both. And here are 0.1, 10% of people that are in both. And if you just add the 0.3 plus the 0.4, you'll get 0.7, but you'll be double counting this 10% of people. And so the addition rule says add 0.3 plus 0.4, but then subtract off the people that were counted twice in the orange section right here. Now, this will segue into the next formula, which is the conditional probability formula. Now the conditional probability formula that we talked about before is we want to know the probability that you are A given that we know that you are B. And in order to calculate the probability that you are A given you're B, we take the probability that someone is both A and B, that intersection, and you always divide by the thing that is given B. Let's go back to our Venn diagram and see how this formula makes sense. To calculate the probability that someone is A, given we know for sure that they are B in the yellow circle, the formula is to take the intersection of the two, the point 0.1, and divide it by the probability that someone is B, point 0.4. What the uh, conditional probability formula is doing is saying, look, we're just going to take the people that are B, just the people that are in this yellow circle. We know that the person is in the yellow circle. Now that we know that, what is the chance that this person is also A? Well, given that we're just looking at the yellow, Let's move the, uh, move the pink out of the way. We know this person is somewhere in the yellow circle. What's the chance that they're also A? What the formula tells us to do is to take the point 1, divide it by the point 4. Again, let's think about the people in a room. People in a room, everybody leave who is not B. So let's think about our 1,000 people in a room again. Out of 1,000 people in a room, 400 will be B. So this, instead of 0.4, if it's easier to picture, think about it as 400 out of 1,000 people. That's 40%. Everybody else leave. Now that we've just got the 400 people here, how many people out of the 400 are going to be also A? Well, 10% out of the 1,000, which are 100 people, right? So we're just looking at the 400 people who are B, 100 of those people are A. So what percentage of the 400 are also A? Well, it's 100 out of the 400. 100 divided by 400 would give us 25%, 0.25. And that's all that conditional probability formula is saying. So looking at these same numbers here, the probability that someone is A given B Take the probability that they're both, 0.1, divide it by the probability that somebody's B, 0.4, and we get 0.25. 25% chance that somebody is A now that we know that they're B. 
Um, rule number four is the multiplication rule, and I don't like to think about the multiplication rule as being different, really. Um, but most people do, so we'll talk about it. The multiplication rule, all it is, is taking the conditional probability rule and rewriting it. And it does come in handy sometimes. Look up here at the conditional probability rule. It says the probability of A given B equals the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. In order to get the multiplication rule, all we do is multiply both sides by the probability of B. And so we get the probability of A given B times the probability of B on one side and the probability of A and B on the other side. This comes in handy just a little easier to use if you know, if you happen know, to know the probability of A given B and the probability of B and you want to find out what that intersection is. So multiplication rule just says, look, so suppose I know that the probability of A given B is that 0.25, but I don't know how many people are A and B, right? I don't know anything about that. That in order to figure out how big that intersection is, I can take the probability of A given B times 0.4, so 0.25, times 0.4 will give me that 0.1 back again. Now in words, or a little bit easier way to think about what's going on here is, uh, let's think about being rich and being educated again to give us something concrete to think about. Suppose I know that 25% of bees, of rich people are educated. 25% of rich people are educated. Now, what percentage of people are um, rich to begin with? Suppose that's what B is, rich. And A is educated. Well, if 25% of the rich people are educated, and we want to know what percentage of people are both rich and educated. The formula is just saying take 25%, take a quarter of the 40%. Because a quarter of the 40% are also educated. So that gives us the 10% that must be both. So that's a way to think about this conditional probability formula and how it works. So we have the conditional probability rule to calculate the probability of A given B. And we rewrite the, the uh, conditional probability rule slightly to uh, get the multiplication rule. So I like to think about them as the same thing, just written slightly differently. Now, a very important idea here is statistical independence. Statistical independence, the technical definition is you have to check and you have to know that the probability of A is the same thing as the probability of A given B. Or you could also know, either one, that the probability of B is the same as the probability of B given that you're A. Let's look at a Venn diagram in order to understand this. Okay. Statistical independence, using a, an example that you can hopefully picture. In a, a standard deck of cards, there are 52 cards, and 25% of them are hearts, 25% are spades, 25% are clubs, and 25% are diamonds. There are also four cards out of 52 that are queens. And so let's calculate these probabilities real quickly. As I said, uh, there are four suits and 25% uh, of the cards are hearts, so that probability is 0.25. And there are four queens out of 52 in the deck. So four divided by 52 gives us a probability of 0 0.076923. 0 0.076923 is the probability that you can draw a queen out of a deck of cards. Now, let's check to see if being a heart 
is independent of, statistically independent. Sometimes people modify this word. Statistically independent of um, the idea that a card is a queen. And they are independent if the probability of one of the things, say hearts is A, is the same as the probability of drawing a heart given it's a queen. Right? So let's check to see if that's true. Now, if, now, I always have to, to implore people, don't guess that these things are equal. Don't guess whether something's independent or not. Always calculate. Always do it. You're always, uh, you think you can guess whether something's independent or not. But you always want to actually do the calculations. So let's replace A here with the probability that it's a heart. And let's see if that is the same, that a card is a heart, given it's a queen. Once we know for sure that we're just looking at the queens, now what's the chance that it's a heart? Well, we know that the probability that a card is a heart is 0.25. Let's look at this other uh, probability over here. Now we can do this in our head by picturing the cards. And let's also do it the formal way. But let's picture the cards. Suppose I told you that I only have the queens. I only have the queens. Given that I'm only looking at the queens, what is the probability that you could draw a heart out of those queens? Now there are four queens. One is a heart, one is a diamond, one is a spade, and one is a club. So if I had four cards in front of you and said, draw one of these queens, what's the probability that you get a heart? Well, it's one out of four, which is the same 0.25. Now let's calculate this using the conditional probability formula just to make sure that we know what we're doing. The conditional probability formula, remember, says um, to calculate the probability of a heart given uh, it's a queen is equal to the intersection, the probability that a card is both a heart and a queen. I'm not going to use that uh, intersection symbol just because it's hard to to type in this program and divide it by the probability that a card is a queen so what's the probability that a card out of a deck of cards is both a heart and a queen well that is one out of 52 so one divided by 52 because there's only one card that's a heart and a queen that's the queen of hearts and so that probability is 0.01923307. Divide that by the probability that a card is a queen. Well, we've got that probability up here, 0 0.076923. 0 0.076923. Now, pause the video and do that calculation. Okay, if you pause the video and you divided those two numbers, you will find that the answer is exactly 0.25. And because the probability of drawing a heart, given that it's a queen, is the same as this 0.25 probability that you draw a heart not knowing it's a queen, we say that being a heart and being a queen are statistically independent. Now what does this mean, really? What statistical independence tells us is that once you know that a card is a queen, it will not change the probability that it's a heart. And this goes the other way as well. Once you know that those two things are independent, you can flip the H and the Q and replace the Q here. It tells you that the probability of drawing a queen does not change either once you know that the card is a heart. Play this game with a deck of cards and convince yourself. And we're going to see some other examples of statistical independence as we go along. It's complicated, but we'll come back for another part in a minute.